Welcome back to Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. We are broadcasting from the Thacker Jewelry Studios, and we want to get right to the phones. We've got the Mayor Pro Tem, Steve Massingill, on the phone. Uh, Steve, uh, congratulations on uh, becoming the Mayor Pro Tem. Oh, thanks, Matt. I appreciate that. There's it seems like there's been a lot happened since since the council voted on that, but I appreciate you yeah, saying that. But I haven't talked to you since then. <laughs> I know it. I know it. I think the last time we were together, we were in person, and here we are virtually. Yeah, so. I, yeah, I know. Uh, but uh, but congratulations. I know that. Uh, I, I think uh, from if I actually listened to the vote, it was the night that y'all had all the the really 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 late, and then y'all had to do it after all of the. Uh, five hours of talking so yeah, yeah it was a late night it was yeah. it was actually done in wednesday the next day <laughs> yeah so but but congratulations uh now y'all had a city council meeting yesterday uh, so how uh how's everything going uh any anything major to report from the city council meeting well we had a good meeting uh yesterday matt and I, i'll say hi i assume dave's on the line too this yeah morning. he's there somewhere hi dave um we hey, good, good morning. Meeting. I'm here. I'm just listening. Okay, well, I just want to make, make, make sure you're, you're there. Um, yeah. <laughs> we we uh, spent some time in work session on um, a downtown park. Uh, uh, this is some, some money appropriated for design of the park uh, from the downtown TIF. It was already approved in our most recent budget, and so we spent some time on that. Uh, that was, a, And then in regular session, we, we voted on that. That's that's a po- the possibility of a park on the block that the old LPNL building sits on today on Broadway. I guess that'd be Broadway and Avenue L. Um, and so we've approved the process to start the design and, and conceptualization of that park. So uh, as far as the park is concerned, I know that uh, they've, they've got a picture here of it on, uh, I guess it's everythinglubbock.com, and uh, of what y'all might be looking for. Uh, but y'all were going to tear down the building and, and have a blank space no matter what, right? I mean, that's already kind of been decided. Well, yes, at this point, yes. And, and keep in mind, the park is a result of our, you know, our downtown redevelopment plan that we've worked on now for several years. You know, when I first got elected to council and we contemplated all the moves associated with uh, Citizens Tower, we we had considered selling that property. But when you look at uh, the revitalization of downtown and all the momentum we have right now with the various uh, things going on, it just made more sense to consider that park long-term and and the benefits it would create for the activity downtown. You know, I think the park has potential for possible sponsorship or, or private donations as well. So, um, I think it's important to tell your listeners that the park is not funded. All that's funded is the design of the park. But it's a it's a project that I support. I think I'm on the record many times supporting downtown redevelopment. And I think this is an important part of that. So, uh, I was... let me let me jump in here because I was uh, reading that story that was online this morning, and this sounds like it's going to be quite something. I mean, it's, this is going to be a, a, a rather large. Park right in downtown Lubbock, right on Broadway. As a matter of fact, mm-hmm. if I'm if I'm reading that correctly, but uh, explain. Can you explain to the audience some of the features that it's going to have, and and how it's going to differ from just your your standard parks in Lubbock with some grass and trees and you know. Yeah, it's not going to be a, a, a blank slate of trees and uh, turf. I I think that we might there might be some opportunity to take advantage of the basement that's already there. In other words, this could be a multi-level um, park. Uh, you know, parks that like these central anchor parks in, in downtowns that you see that attract the activity might have places for food trucks, and you'd have a, a large lawn to gather to watch them. Maybe there's a movie uh, shown during the summer or – the concepts last night showed a temporary ice skating rink in the winter. There's there's just a lot of really neat things you could do to make sure that there's activity at a park like this downtown. So this is not what you typically seen done in Lubbock. So, well, I have just commented earlier this morning, uh, Steve, about how 
uh, I am I, I'm so proud of Lubbock. I think this is going to be one of the crown jewels, but also I was just mentioning the Buddy Holly Center, although I haven't, uh, or Performing Arts Center, I guess we should say. Uh, I yeah. haven't been inside it, but I've driven around it, and I've seen pictures from the inside, and it just it seems to be, it's just breathtaking. And I think it's going to be the crown jewel, don't you? Yeah, I think it's going to be really nice. You know, when when you when you consider all that's going on, you mentioned the Buddy Holly Hall uh Keep in mind, South Plains College is uh, soon to start construction on the building they bought from us, the old city hall. There's still a graduate student housing project set to break ground, which is just south of uh, the Civic Center. Um, We've started on our parking structure adjacent to um, Citizens Tower. Uh, Next, we'll start construction on the remodel of the building to become municipal court. And then following that, you'll see construction begin on the new uh, police headquarters. So there's just, you know, that's just, that's not even all of the activity going on downtown. And then when you add things like an anchor park that we've talked about, it just really, really changes the complexion of downtown Lubbock. So we're we're talking with uh, Mayor Pro Tem of the Lubbock City Council, Steve Massingale. And uh, one of the things that they said in this uh, kind of design is that it was going to have to have uh, bathrooms and some type of like kitchen or warming area. Um, are, are, is the city looking at maybe renting out the facilities there? Well, again, those were concepts suggested by the designer. We haven't seen a final design. I'm sure we have a potential to have several types of facilities associated with it. I'm sure the bathroom facilities are really a non-negotiable. I know we need to have nice bathroom facilities, but um, it would yet to be determined, Matt, on how we would handle that. We need to go through this process that we, we've, we've hired um, this firm to help us with, and then at the end of that process, we'll be able to say, yeah, we're going to – yeah, we are going to have facilities that are going to be available, or you'll be able to rent – portion of this park for your community activity okay yeah well matt it sounds to me like that they're wanting citizen input so matt you can uh, uh you know i know how you're focused on downtown you could give them some citizens input from yourself <laughs> there will that's a great point dave and that's the first part of this process but yes there will be uh, a lot of opportunity for citizen input as we design this park yeah uh uh Ed, now i'm i'm just looking at the uh the kind of uh I guess I, I don't know. It's the picture that uh, was put. I, I, I know that that was just. It's it's not what's going to be there. It hasn't been designed yet, right? The picture that you right. see and that has been released. Um, but is there any plans for a, a children's park on there? I just don't see anything, you know, for the children to play on or anything there. You know, we didn't talk about any um, playground equipment for this type of park. Uh, as you know, we have many parks that have playground equipment. LISD has playground right. equipment on many of their, their properties, but uh, we that was not discussed on this one, Matt. Yeah. Well, I didn't see any, and, and uh, I don't know that uh, with that type of park if that's what you would be looking for anyway, but I was just going to ask. All right, uh, we do have to take a quick break. We're on the phones with Mayor Pro Tem Steve Massingill from the Lubbock City Council, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. We are broadcasting from the Thacker Jewelry Studios, and we're speaking with Mayor Pro Tem Steve Massingale of the Lubbock City Council. And uh, one of the questions, I mean, one of the things that I wanted to kind of get from you, if if you have any news, is uh, what the City Council has been talking about as far as the uh, COVID-19 and and the vaccine coming into the city. I know that uh, there are people already getting it here. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, Matt, we talk about that a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we're fortunate that uh, we have the hospitals that we have. I believe Covenant got it yesterday, and uh, UMC uh, gets their delivery later in the week. So um, the state's been really good about keeping us apprised of, of how those vaccines will be delivered. In addition to what the state allocates, uh, I know that uh, – Covenant and its system uh, has been able to bring additional vaccines in. And then you'll see later in the month that um, some of our larger pharmacies will be able to uh, administer that vaccine as well. Well, that's good. 
Um, now I know that my, I mean, uh, I don't know how much I'm supposed to say, but I know that my wife is supposed to get the vaccine today. You know, she's a nurse yeah, there at sure. Covenant. So, uh, so she's scheduled today. And so it was kind of exciting just to see how quickly this came out and how fast, I mean, more than anything, how fast they're able to get it to the people. I, I mean, they talked about distribution potentially being part of the problem, but it really seems like they've just gotten it all out. Yeah, it's been impressive. I agree with you. The way um, the FDA's gotten it approved and the states uh, got it distributed as fast as they have, it, it's impressive. And I think it's, you know, it's a priority for everybody. I think it's important to note that with news of the vaccine doesn't mean we're, we're, we're out of a pandemic. And I think that um, uh, there will be a sequence of which the vaccine will be administered. And your, your wife being on the front line, she, we want her to. We want her vaccinated first because she's caring for us. But you'll see that once we get our, our, our frontline health care workers um, vaccinated, then we'll move to people like our first responders and those that are critical workers. Um, for example, Lubbock Power and Light, you, you know, we want Lubbock Power and Light's been affected by COVID-19. And we, we want to make sure that if there's a power outage, that we have people available to get the power on. So, there's a sequence to, to go down the line. Uh, those most vulnerable uh, will also be prioritized, and then the general public will have access to it. Okay, Steve, uh, let me jump in here and ask. We've had several uh, texters this morning that have commented about uh, the city park that's, uh, that's going up that was voted approved 6-0 by the council last night. Um, there's, I think, three people commented about it being a new place for the homeless to live, but also about the budget, which uh, which makes me wonder. It, uh, I, I look around at all the businesses that are closed because of COVID or operating, you know, at, at less than 100 percent, and it makes me wonder uh, what it and how that has affected our budget. Well, I don't know that that has had any direct effect on the budget, but I think you bring up a good point about if we build a park, will it be um, a magnet for homeless? And, you know, I, I hope not. And I think it's important to note that we are continuing to work on our homeless issues. We have a committee led by Councilwoman Joy, and, and uh, I'm hopeful that we'll get a report from them soon on the work that they're doing um, as it uh, applies to the care for our homeless. So um, th those are legitimate issues. I think the other thing that's important to note is that as the city um, has established its legislative agenda moving into uh, the legislative session, which will start in January for the state of Texas, is that one piece of legislation that we're going to push for is the ability for cities our size to uh, uh, have an an ordinance that that addresses empty buildings and how we uh, treat empty buildings. And, and if you're the owner of an empty building, how you care for that building to make sure it doesn't become a, um, a uh, refuge for homeless people. So that's on top of our mind. We're continuing to work on it. And at the end of the day, uh, our goal will, will be to have a nice park that's not um, occupied by homeless people. Yeah, um, is, is the uh, designers are they d focused on that as well? Do uh, do they have any uh, a th thoughts or um, do they at least understand that that could potentially be a problem and there could maybe be some design things that could uh, help to stop that from happening? Yes, I'm sure those will, uh, that will be involved in our discussion uh, as we develop the plans for the park. Okay. One other thing that I wanted to make sure to get to is that uh, another thing that y'all did is y'all set up the election for the, I guess, uh, the, it's called the Sanctuary City for Unborn. Um, it's something that uh, it really wasn't a choice. It, it had to be done, um, and, and y'all have some costs potentially on that. Uh, could you give us a little information about that? Sure. At this point, with, with the way the process is done, uh, this is start with the initiative process as it applies to an ordinance. Um, the group uh, initiating the process opted for an election. The way the charter addresses it is it doesn't give the, the council a, the discretion to say yes or no to the election. It actually just gives the council the duty 
to administer the election. And so that was on our consent agenda last night. There was no discussion on it. Um, you know, and there's an plenty of discussion before on it. <laughs> yeah, we're not short of discussion. That's <laughs> for sure on that topic. But um, any election is expensive. I guess we could spend up to two hundred thousand dollars on that election. Um, but again, we don't have a choice in the matter. That's the way the uh, process is set up in the charter. And at this point in time, there will be a uh, an election in May on sanctuary cities. All right. Well, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Steve Massengale, thank you so much for coming on and speaking with us. You bet. Glad to be. Always glad to visit with you guys. All right. Thanks. Thank you. You have a good day. You too. All right. We'll be right back on Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin.